Right, question six. So we need to write this like this. Well, if I just use my addition formula, right, just to expand that bit, that gives me r, and that's going to give me sine x cos alpha plus cos x and sine. So we want to know when sine x plus 2 cos x. I'm going to try and match these things together. So what you're going to do is you're going to equate the coefficients. If you imagine multiplying this out, r times sine x times cos alpha. Well, imagine if I put a little 1 in front there, look. So that times that bit has got to equal 1. So I can write r cos alpha must equal 1. And in exactly the same way here, I've got r times cos x times sine alpha. So that times that must equal 2. So I can now write this down equals 2. Now think about how you can combine these guys together. So this one divided by this one. All right? And that will give me tan. All right? The answer cancel, sine over cos, you should know is tan. So I can write that down. Inverse um, R2, inverse tan there. So that will give me, uh, make sure that you're working in radians here, right? it does mention radians up here and it says the three decimal places there. So that will give me 1.107. Now let's think about the R, okay? And all you have to do is just think about, well, what about if you square these two things and add them together, okay? So R cos alpha, imagine squaring that, and then plus sine Okay, don't worry about what sign, sign in cos there. Right, what's that equal to? 1 squared plus 2 squared, that's equal to 5, isn't it? Right, if I take the r out, r squared, and then what have you got in there? I've got cos squared, sine squared, so multiplied by 1, that equals 5. r squared equals 5, so r must equal root 5. Now, I like to just write it in terms of what we've actually got. So what have we got? We've got root 5, and then sine, and then we've got x plus our 1.107. All right, so that's where we've got to so far. Now, people then tend to get a little bit confused by this bit here. All right, and we need to look at what's going on. Here, all right, now there's lots of clues here, right? It, say, it says down here, though, it says use the equation of the model and your answer. What we've just done, all right, it's trying to tell us what to do, all right? Yes, it's given us some, like, some horrible kind of context here. So this is the x bit, all right, just here. So let's rewrite what we've got just here, all right? Now, if I rewrite this, I'm going to write it next to it here so you can see, all right? So, so we're talking about the temperature, aren't we? All right, so we've got 5 plus, now what's going on here? All right, now we've just shown that we can rewrite that, right? And we can rewrite it like this. And the x bit is just that bit there. Compare this to what we've got here, all right? So this part here is x. So what we're going to do is going to write this down. We're going to pop in x is this value just here, all right? So we can write that down. So root 5, and then we've got sine, and then this is the x value, all right? I know it looks a little bit yuck, but minus 3. And then, so that's the x value, and then remember then we've got to add in that 1 point, add 1.107. Okay. Now, the first part of the question, so let's just remember this just here. Using the equation of the models, you answered, right, okay, we've done that, right, to juice the maximum temperature. So the maximum temperature is when this bit here, right, sine of something, when's, when's sine the biggest, right, it's, well, the biggest it can be is 1, right, so when's that 1, 5 plus root 5, so the biggest temperature would be 5 add root 5, because it's when this thing is 1. Now, that then leads us on to part C, right? We've done part B. 
So part C is when is this bit here actually going to equal 1? So let's write that down, right? So what have we actually got? So what we're interested in is when sine and over t12 and then minus uh, 1.8 So that's that minus 3 plus 1.187 equals 1. Okay, inverse sine. And the rest of it should be pretty much kind of plain sailing. It's just making sense of kind of what we've actually got just there. All right. Now, if you if you add the 1.893, multiply by 12, divide by pi, and then t would then equal 13.2307 and some other stuff afterwards. Okay. Now, the question says find the time of day. Now remember that's a number of hours after midnight. So we're okay in terms of, that's 13 hours, isn't it? So it's gonna be 13 something, but remember time isn't decimal, so that 0.23. So what you need to do is just this bit here, just multiply that by 60, and then that'll give you the number of minutes. Um, if you multiply that by 60, it gives you to the nearest minute there, it's gonna be 13.14, or if you prefer, let's go for 1.14 p.m.